Well, I just want to take and give you a kind of an insight of what we've had to deal with in Tyler, Texas the other day. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, just because you put on a robe, maybe a mask, it does not give you special authority. So we're going to be diving into a very, very special Bible study this morning. And we're going to be asking the question, can I be unbaptized to Christ by a Satanist? And so you're really going to want to probably like this. And most of all... you to be a part of this uh, for anyone that may be fairly uh, we talk of newborn Christian fairly weak in the faith of not knowing uh, what is actually uh, their belief system is or maybe someone who's going through a hardship uh, but uh, and, and all of a sudden they're like well maybe God doesn't love me God doesn't care about me but right now when there are people today that honestly believe honestly believe that because you put on a robe and because you put on a mask and you make us a quotation that uh, that you can be unbaptized to Jesus Christ. So let's let's dive deep into this. So hundreds of pagan uh, 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 Tyler lights they they converged on the downtown square on Saturday this this last week, uh, but not without resistance from what we call some of the local Christians. Now the Christians that did show up, they were just trying to spread love. Uh, you're not going to take and win a battle. Uh, of wits with people that are totally convinced that they're not going to be a part of something or believe in something. So what does transform people is love. Uh, we learn that from uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, listen, believeth in him should not perish. Did you get that? but have everlasting life. And that word everlasting life is one of the things we're going to deal with today. But once again, uh, the pagans were celebrating their second annual, their second annual uh, uh, pagan pride fest, uh, which spotlights vendors and residents who, who don't believe in religions such as Christianity, Judaism, Islam. And, and even though they say that they are not trying to promote Satanism, well, you can see on the video behind me that they're getting people to walk up and then they'll go back in and take and put a, an upside down cross on somebody's head and get them to holler out, Hail Satan. And, and then they give them a certificate. And I think you get the certificate for $10. <laughs> Lady Karen, it's amazing. Uh, so, uh, but once again, people are so easily deceived in this day and age. So we're going to deal with this today to help bring some understanding and some love. And Pamela, good to see you. So please grab your, your Bible, pen and paper. Now this is going to be the shorter version. Later on I'll go into to a very deeper version for people who really want to get into the discipleship program. Uh, but once again, there's a lot of buzz, a lot of media. Uh, we've run into so many people that were freaked out by it. And, 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 and what I'm finding out is a lot of people who that say they're saved and they, they call themselves a Christian uh, come to find out uh, a lot of them are not fundamentally grounded in the Word of God. So once again, just because you put on a, a garment, just because you might even put on a mask, you might say a little ritual, can we undo what God has done? Well, we're going to learn that scripturally this morning, all right? So the question is, can I be unbaptized to Christ by a Satanist? Uh, so once again, uh, uh, this, the, the, the Church of Satan, uh, the Satanic Temple in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, they invited attendees uh, to participate in a ritual, which they say reverses the traditional Christian baptism and is considered a way to cleanse any ties to a prior religion according to their group. Well, let's go back and see according to God. All right? So I hope this brings peace and comfort to you. I went over this with my wife and uh, last night, and she she was very, very excited uh, once again. said, hey, we've got to get this message out. So let's do that now. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14, I want you to write that down. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14. Listen to what the word, I read out of the King James Version, so I hope you'll follow along with me. He says, I know that whatsoever God 
doeth. Now stop there for a moment. Hi, Aaron. Whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Now go back and take Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14. Write that in the front of your Bible. Somebody says, well, I got saved when I was young, or I got saved and baptized when I was young. Can I denounce it? Can I reverse that? Well, based on the Word of God, the answer is no. All right, now watch this. Ecclesiastes 3.14, I want you to grab this today. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken away from it. And God doeth it, and men should fear before him. So we know that in John chapter 10, verse 28 through 30, once again, this is a very important Bible study to help people get really grounded, not to be living in fear, but to be living in faith because they trust in the word of God. In John chapter 10, verse 28 through 30, it says, And I give unto them eternal life. Now, you know, this is coming from the lips of Jesus Christ. I give... See, you didn't earn it. You can't buy it. He gave you a gift. So I give unto them what? Eternal life. How long is eternal? It's forever, folks. It's not in. It's nonstop. It's eternal. You can't undo that. And he says, and they shall never perish. Did you get that? You, you, in fact, later on we'll learn that you cannot unsave yourself. God's the one that did the saving. God's the one that does the, you know, the, the setting up of the sealing by the Holy Spirit. We'll learn about this. But the Bible says in John 10, 28 through 30, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never, circle that word never, never perish. Neither, here it is, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Any man, any man, right? My Father which gave them me, is greater than all. There's the why. And no man, write that down, no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Jesus says we're in agreement on this. We sustain this. We support this. This has been established by the Creator. Okay? The Creator is greater than all. Okay? In Romans chapter 8, Paul says in verse 31 through 39, once again, this sermon is a Bible study that's going to get you completely grounded. And this is just the quick version, but to help you get started and get it into the Word of God so that you can K-N-O-W, that not only do you know you're saved, but you can know you're sealed. And what God has done, no man can undo. Now look at here. Romans chapter 8, verse 31 through 39. It says, What? Shall we say to these things, if God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Now, I want you to underline that. It is God that justifies us. That's the same as from God's perspective. He's just as if I've never sinned. Isn't that amazing? Verse 34 says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who, has, who makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us? Now watch this. Verse 35 of Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Now you can put in parentheses out there a ritual, a satanic ritual, a denunciation, uh, whatever you want to put. But he says, he asked the question, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And uh, verse 36 says, as it is written, talking about the word of God, for thy sake we are killed all day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. So the Christians today that are going out uh, promoting the truths of God. There are many that, uh, that have lost their lives because of their faith. Missionaries have lost, for years have lost their lives for their faith. And uh, we're living in a day and time where everything is anti-Christ, anti-Christian. And so he says, for thy sake, uh, Paul says, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And so, nay, verse 37, 
In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. Now, this is the important part. I am persuaded, Paul says, that neither death nor life nor angels or principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Notice it did not say our love for God. It said, in other words, uh, uh, separated from the love that God has for us. So it says, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Notice this, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we read John 3.16 uh, 3, earlier where it said, uh, For God so loved the world, there's that word love, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what have we learned? Well, first of all, based on the word of God, salvation is forever. And so he says in Isaiah chapter 51, verse 6, he says in Isaiah, he says, Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. Now watch this. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Wow, did you get that? So all the stuff that you're seeing where people are assembling and putting on special garments and masks and doing rituals based on the word of God. God, the creator, is above all. He's the one who created everything. And yet he is above all and he oversees all. He owns all. And so here he says, uh, uh, but my salvation shall be forever and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Praise the Lord for that verse. So the believer, we also know, their salvation is forever. But number two, the believer is sanctified forever. Sanctified means set aside, you know, for God to use for his glory. So he said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, For by one offering, talking about Christ dying on the cross, shedding his blood for you and I. For by one offering he has perfected. Did you get that word perfected? He says forever. That's what we're looking for. The words forever. For by one offering he has perfected forever them, circle that, that are sanctified. Hebrews 10, 14. And we are sanctified forever from the penalty of sin, from the power of sin, the pollution of sin, the presence of sin. And so we're no longer have to be a slave to sin because God gives us a spirit and uh, the Word of God, in conjunction with that, with congruency, it's where they work together to help us to lay the foundations to, to establish our faith. So, once again, salvation is forever. And uh, salvation is also the will of God. God's will for us is to repent of our sins and turn to Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, just like the thief on the cross, and ask, will you remember me? Will you come into my heart? Will you save me? And then, Lord, I want you to, I pray that you would, with the power of the Holy Spirit, that you bring a change in my heart, in my mind, and in my life. So the believer, their salvation's forever. They're, they are sanctified forever. They can't lose that. And so salvation is the will of God. He says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 7, <clears throat> Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written to me, listen, to do thy will, O God. It is God's will that people would turn to him and look for his love, to, and his love would be able to come into our lives and change our lives and seal us. So we are selected by the Father, we are saved by the Son, and we are sealed by the the Spirit. Let me say that again. We are selected by God the Father. That's the whosoever will. That's you. That's me. Saved by the Son. 
and then sealed by the Holy Spirit. Let's look into this. So the work of Christ is a once for all event in my life and in your life. Hebrews 10.10, 10, by the which we are sanctified, listen, 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 through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, underline this, once for all. It means you can't undo it, folks. If you want to be biblically based as a Christian, that means we go back to what Jesus said, what the Word of God says, and we don't veer to the left or to the right because of some denomination, all right? But we're, we're the children of God. We're called out, sanctified by God, and we're to have our faith strengthened by understanding the Word of God. So the Scriptures are forever. We know that. And so in Psalms 119, verse 89, forever, there's that word, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So the Word of God is infallible, uh, inerrant. It's inspired. His Word will not pass away. His words abound, they abide, and they assure us. This is why we need the assurance of God in these days that we live in. And so the Holy Trinity of God is also forever. Uh, it says in Matthew 28, 20, Jesus is forever. Teaching them, this is for the Great Commission, that's one of the reasons why we're here in Tyler, Texas now. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. And that word world means the age. It means for all time. And then he says, amen. That means they're in agreement. And so Jesus is forever and the Holy Spirit is forever. So in John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father, he will give you another comforter, Jesus says, that he may abide with you, look at this, forever. So the question was, can I be unbaptized by a Satanist. I can be unbaptized to Christ by a Satanist. And of course, the answer is no, based on Scripture, all right? So Jesus is forever, Matthew 28, 20. The Holy Spirit is forever, John chapter 14, verse 16. Also in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. He says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, look at this, look at this, look at this, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So the Holy Spirit is forever. So you can't, if it's forever, you can't take it away. You can't lose it. And God the Father is forever, the Bible says. And because God the Father is forever, it says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, let your conversation, that's your lifestyle, how you live your life on this earth. Let your conversation be without uh, covetousness, and be content with such things that you have. For he said, look at this, here it is. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13, 5. You see why this Bible study is so important today? And uh, our security lasts forever. We have an eternal dwelling place. And it says, surely, in Psalms 23, 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not just part but all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We have, not only is our security last forever, but we have eternal righteousness in Him. I'm talking about eternal. So Psalms 111.3, His work is honorable and glorious, and His righteousness, here it is, endures forever. And we have eternal redemption in Him. Uh, remember, we're not saved by us, not by what we did or didn't do. We're saved by what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. So this is his work, not our work. And so he says in Hebrews 9, 12, that we have eternal redemption in him. He says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once, talking about Jesus, into the holy place, having obtained, here it is, eternal redemption for us. I'm so glad that what God has done that no man can undo, aren't you? Then we will one day have an eternal reign with him, the Bible says. And uh, it says in Revelation 22, 5, it says, And there shall be no more night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. Now here it is. 
and they shall reign forever and ever. John 14, 1 through 6. I love reading these verses. Let not your heart be troubled. You believed in God. Believe also in me. He says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Now look at this. I go to prepare a place for you. Aren't you glad there's no bulldozers in heaven, Lady Karen? Once he builds it, it's built. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and, and the way we know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus Christ himself said this. Jesus said to him in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the sinner without Christ, though, will perish forever. So if you're not saved, or maybe you did some religious ceremony, somebody said, well, I, I got baptized, or I joined a church, that's not going to save you any more than me hanging out in my garage. It's going to make me a car. You see? So this is, a, this is a supernatural work done by a supernatural God in a supernatural way, and it's secured by that supernatural God. Not by any human effort of my own, or lack of human effort, but yet the sinner, talking about someone who's never trusted Christ as their Savior, uh, the sinner without Christ will perish forever. We're looking for those words forever. Revelation 14, 11, And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receives the mark of his name. In Luke chapter 16, a very quoted verse, I quote it a lot, most preachers may not, but I do. In Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 31, Jesus tells us a, a reality story. It's not just a story, it's the reality. From the very lips of Jesus Christ, he says, There was a certain rich man uh, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And here it is. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art, uh, 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 and thou art tormented. So we find here that as we have read the story, that it says you are tormented. So as you continue to read the story, you're going to find that there's going to be a lot of things where people are going to uh, wonder, well, does it last forever? Well, let's continue that reading. He says he's tormented. Verse 26, he says, and besides all this, now this is important, between us and you, there's a great gulf that is fixed, circle that word fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And then he said, But I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, and that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abram said in verse 29, he says, Abram said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but, but, Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, which is the word of God, neither will they be persuaded the one rose from the dead. Just a couple more scriptures and we'll close out. This is the short version for today. But once again, can I be unbaptized uh, to Christ by a Satanist? No, can't do that. 
Uh, we've already read the scriptures that no man can pluck you from the Father's hand. I am my Father of one. So in Romans chapter 8, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ecclesiastes 3.14, he says, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be what? Forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken away from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. John chapter 10, verse 28 through 30 that we read earlier. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I hope you're getting this today. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Did you get that? I and my Father are one. We're in agreement on this. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they're the ones that do all the saving, not some denomination, not some religious ritual. And if they do the saving, there is no denomination or ritual that can undo what God has done. Romans 8, 31 through 39, we read. Let's, let's just reiterate this. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 37 says... He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. That's all of us. That's why today that people, they're not going to get saved because we, we try to go out and, and debate them or scream at them or holler at them or yell at them. I will tell you right now on our website, there's a, a man that was one of the head Satanists. And there were four individual couples that were uh, that didn't judge him. They just put love to him. And he said, he was crying. He said, I've, I've never known love. And it was through their love they had for him through Christ that he found Jesus Christ. He denounced everything he was as a Satanist. And now then he has his own YouTube channel and he tells them about how that Christ has come into his heart and changed his life forever. So once again, you know, God died for all of us. And it's his will that every one of us come to the know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So what's the best thing I can do is I can love people. I can pray for people. I can share information with them if they want to hear it. And I can go back to them over and over and over. That's why these sermons are so important. That's why ministries like ours that we have today, uh, we're not promoting a church. We're not promoting a denomination. We're promoting uh, the truth of Jesus Christ. I hope you'll stay tuned in with us. But once again, let's skip down for time's sake. In Romans chapter 8, I love this, verse 38 through 39. Paul says, for I am persuaded, and that's where you and I need to be. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And our last verse, John three sixteen. Are you ready? Let this sink in. For God so loved the world, that's everyone, that he gave his only begotten son, in other words, for everyone, that whosoever believeth in him, that's for everyone, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The thief on the cross did that. In fact, he repented when he said, I'm guilty. I deserve this. And folks, you know, uh, because of Adam and Eve, that sin was passed upon all of us. That's why this is the short version. We'll go into a lot, a lot more detailed uh, Bible study later on. But I just want to get the version out there that says, hey, don't forget that Jesus died even for that thief that was on the cross. In fact, there was another thief, and Jesus was dying for him too. Even though one received Christ and the other rejected Christ, and the Bible says if we rejected Christ and we draw our last breath and our chances to get saved is over. But as long as you're breathing right now today, because there's no promise of tomorrow. You can be like that thief on the cross. He did, he's not going to get a tomorrow. And he said, I'm guilty. I deserve this. But he looked at Jesus and Christ, the Christ, and said, Would you remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom? You know what Jesus said? He said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. 
The Bible also says the day is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Why not to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Realize that you're a sinner. Be willing to repent. At least have a change in attitude toward God, toward sin, and toward yourself. And yes, toward sin. And so you're saying, I want you to come into my heart and into my life. I want to live with you forever. But I also understand that, that there is a conversation or the way that I live my life that may not meet up to what the Word of God says that a child of God should be living. So I'm willing to repent. Now I'm willing to allow that change to come into my life that I might bring glory and honor and praise to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost for the rest of my life. And that I'm trusting you on that day that I draw my last breath that when I open my eyes, I'll be carried by angels into your bosom. Lord, thank you. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for shedding your blood for us. Now, Lord, if there be one that's not for sure they're truly saved, then I pray that, they, that the Spirit of God would come in right here, right now, and begin to deal with their heart. So, Father, we're going to pray. Lord, we pray today that the Holy Spirit would have the freedom to bring conviction into each and every heart that they are, know that they're a sinner in the eyes of God and that that same Holy Spirit would convict them that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and then they would turn and look to Jesus by simply asking Him to save them, trusting Him by faith. So Father, we pray Dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner and the best I know how. I'm asking Jesus the Christ to come into my heart. Take away my sins. Save me forever. And we freely receive your Holy Spirit and acknowledge him in our lives. Save me, Lord Jesus. Remember me, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for saving me once and for all. Holy Spirit, help me to grow to become the child of God that would bring glory and honor to your holy name. We ask this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God bless you today. The Bible says if you just prayed that prayer to Jesus, trusting Him and only Him, that your name is written in the Lamb of God's book. And that's forever. God bless you. Please like this, but most of all, share it with people. This is not about, you know, getting numbers. It's about reaching people. And uh, there's people we can't reach. But you can simply hand this message over to someone and they will listen we're going to pray that they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and realize it's forever. God bless you all, and we'll see you until next time. I pray this was a blessing to you. Visit our website, L-Y-I-T-L dot org. That's for loveyouinthelord.org. It's Dr. H. God bless you all. Bye-bye.